Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. Okay, so guys, the problem which we have now is this is Rajesh, this is Akash, this is Ashwarya, and this is uh, let's say Mohan. So all of us is a part of the same team. All of us have the uh, local repo. All of us are doing versioning of their source code in the local repo. That means git add commit, git add commit, you know that. Now the question is, how do we share these codes with each other? That is the problem which we have right now. How do we share? So we ask the same question to uh, Linus Torvald. Okay. So Linus Torvald, we ask the same question. Hey, how can we share the code with each other? Then guys, do you remember that you have repo? When I say repo means what? Repo means what? All of you? Repo means this part, correct now? Where the, uh, where the versioning. Repo means not a workspace. Repo means not a staging. Repo means this is the last one. Mind it. So then when we ask Linus Torvald, hey, how can we share the code with each other using Git? So Linus Torvald respond, hey, between the one local repo to another repo, anyone can send their committed code that is called push operation, push operation, or anyone can pull. Let's say this is me. So I I can pull from the different repo or let's say this is Mohan. Mohan can also push, push to this different repo. So this concept, we call it a push and pull. That means if straightforward answer between the two remote repo, if you want to share the commit ID, no matter who's sending with what, you can do push and pull. Simple answer. Between the two rem remote repo, push and pull. Now the next question is, like, okay, when we do that push and pull, it has to be remote. It has to be network based. So which protocol is applied on this? So guys, there are two protocol is been supported by Git. One is SSH protocol. Another one is HTTP protocol. That means HTTP protocol, that means the repo which you are pushing and pulling that has to be over the web server. Web server means Apache or Nginx or whatever it is. If you don't have it, then if you have only uh, two different machines, then you can also do SSH. SSH to one machine to another machine, another machine to another machine, and that's how you can do the push and pull. So these are the two protocol supported by Git. Are you comfortable with it, all of you? All of yes. you? Yes. So now next question yes. is, Next question is, okay, fine. I can do the push and pull. That is not a problem. Okay. I'm just opening that. Get basic remote workflow. Okay. So I can do the push and pull. That's not a problem. But guys, don't you think it's going to be complicated in this flow? Look at this. In a case of four people, four repo, one person has to do the push and pull every day with it against three repo. That's become very complicated, right? What about in the team of 100 people? Just imagine one person has to do the push and pull against 99 percent. And yes, technically it's a feasible. Theoretically it's a feasible, you know, but practically it's not, you know, feasible. Correct now? Correct now? Yes. Yeah. So what is what is the solution then we all have gathered okay please hear me out we all have gathered and say hey let's do one thing we will not push and pull against each other we will not push and pull against each other we will create one more repo okay we'll it's one more repo i'm not talking about the server please mind it we will create one more repo and that repo we will make it as a central remember remember that this is my local repo and for me all the repo is remote repo for me 
all repo is remote repo and now this is also remote repo but this repo because we are doing the push and pull against it as a team so we can call it central repo okay so this idea is good right all of us will do the push and pull against the central repo and then uh, we if you want to send the code to the entire team push that code to the central repo or if you want to get it the code from the team pull that from the repo how about this are you comfortable with this approach yes okay but you know what guys after some time you guys came and asked started asking too many things after some time you guys started asking too many things what what are the things you started asking so let's say some of you are saying rajesh central repo is good but it would be best if you have wiki on the central repo we asked the same question to linus towald and linus towald said no he denied this request said we are very busy with many other stuff we do not have time for all this so at a, at a central repo do we have a wiki like a confluence which i am going to teach you in some time okay so do you have this denied few people said can we have a central repo issue management capability that means kind of ticketing solutions where uh, like a jira i am going to teach you so can we have it the answer is no many people complain saying that hey we need a very rich ui around the this place answer from the git community is no if you are from the security guy or cto then you will look for the role based access someone is having read access someone is having write access and all the stuff like that answer no from the git now many people started saying that hey we are organizations we don't need a one central repo we are having hundreds of projects so we need a hundred central repo and we are not going to have a hundred different places can we have one place where we can host multiple central repo answer is no from the git community some more features people started asking like security scan backup this that and every time whenever you come up with a new request they declined it to serve that so in a simple way i'll tell you git is very good very friendly for the developers with because they got a complete control over the source code if you look at this image again and again this i am getting complete control on the my versioning process where i was earlier i was not having it was located in the server but git is not friendly for the enterprise solutions so all this request you all the services which you need it all the features which you need it is denied understood so far yes yes it, it, it's open source right git yeah GitHub. yeah okay git git okay, okay. Git. now guys so git has a, so much of a limitation but developers love this tool that is where the many organization has come up and said hey no problem linus is busy we are not we will develop a feature for you we will add a wiki issue this that all the feature which you need it but the only thing is you have to pay for it our organization said yes we'll pay for it no problem and that is where these organizations has come up and created the solution which was earlier discussed so these organizations like a github gitlab bitbucket garrett aws azure and tens of more actually so they say no problem we'll create a a platform we we call it a github server or gitlab server or bitbucket server it's not a git server it's a github server it's not a git server it's a gitlab server it's not a git server it's a git bitbucket server and these software you can have wiki issue this feature that feature every feature which you very really want an enterprise friendly so now you know that what exactly github server is 
so github is a hosting platform for multiple central git repo clear all of you basically it's a cloud solution so no one is doing anything locally then right not uh, locally that means uh, this github server you can access through the cloud also and you can install in your enterprise i mean on premises also on prem also on prem okay so both is option is available both you are paid services for the open source code it's a free but for enterprises a paid so now guys let's get started with the github then in that case here is the github okay now it's a free account okay it's you have registered it's a free anyone can start an account anyone can start working on it free of cost now you see that i have already logged in already logged in so what do we do in this case i am going to create a remote repo but ui using ui and then do the push and pull that's all nothing else i have to do so can i show you that uh, feature so let me do that first so here you have multiple organization if you see that multiple organization has been created by me you can also create a new organization is like this create organization so organization means is like one different different project different different department you can have your own organization or github and each organization they have their own repos so let me go to the my temporary one which is i use for the training purpose where is that can you look at it? it's here so this one i created only for the training purpose so if i see the view organizations devops school demo temporary and if you look at this how many repository you have it central one see 86 repository you have it for this training i am creating one new one and what is the name of it so name i'll give it 3 april 2014 actually you should give the better name for the project specific one but right now just i'm giving it now guys here you have option public repo or private repo so public repo it can be visual the code which you commit in the public repo visual to everyone but they cannot modify private repo the code will be visible to only the person whom you assign access and then only those people will be able to access the code and modify the code those whom you allow so i'll go with the public access that's not a problem right now and these are all the things i'll leave it and create a repo i must remind you this is the same thing you did using git in it in your laptop and you created a repo what you did here you created a repo using ui ux okay and now i told you here there's a two protocol supported this is https this is the ssh so remember that for SSH, you need to please hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. And I think this session is being recorded, so it will help you. For SSH, you need to upload your public key to GitHub to work. It's a password list authentications. But that means you have to do one time upload your public key to the GitHub. For HTTPS, you have to use PAT. PAT means personal access token to push and pull HTTPS based. So URL is changed for HTTPS and URL is changed for SSH. Remember that these two protocol different URL. So which one I am going to drive for it. So I'm not going to drive for SSH. Why? Because I cannot upload my key uh, to GitHub. Again, the reason is I have already uploaded my key in the past. So what I'm supposed to do. So I have to generate a pad, but you are, you will have to do that. It's a, SSH is the better one compared to HTTPS faster also. So let me, let me put it up. Upload is look at this upload SSH key to GitHub at the end of it, put the demo. And here you see, how to up generate and upload it. entire instructions you have it you just have to follow this so first thing generate your key first check if you have a public and private key already in your user home like this okay and if not generate a 
key of this is the private key this is the public key powershell you can generate like this bash you can generate like this here all the commands are there and after that log into the github into this area and upload your key which key public key okay so this is the something which you do and your push and pull will become passwordless next question is okay how to generate pat so when you say pat means password and it's not a password token actually so please do not get confused with the github password i repeat please do not get confused with the github password github password we you will not be able to push and pull for push and pull using https you have to do using pat so here just type pat github devops school and here you see how to generate pat in github you will get it this tutorial so this tutorial will help you to generate a pat and this very simple string you can go to this place generate it okay so now i am going to do the push and pull using the pat so for that i am generating a uh, token so get go to the settings go to the developer settings go to the personal actions classic this url and this is the older one i'll delete this and this is the generate a new one classic one and keys i have to give it this is security problem so unfortunately you have to give the key now problem is i am using authentication key just give me 2 second this is the github uh, enforce securities now from last uh, few months so this is earlier it was a password it was easy so i am trying to get the authentication key and i got this so 625565 it got expired again i have to do one more time Hmm. 601.2 now this is i'm creating for demo expiration you can set for whatever you want whatever the access you want to give it you can give it right now blindly i'm giving all access not a good practice but my my concern right now is not to complicate this discussion but generate a pat because that is what i am going to use it for push and pull okay so now here i generated a pat and this is the pat you should have it okay so now can i do the push and pull so let me go to the github go to the demo repo temporary this is the repository which i created if you remember 3rd april 2004 and i am going to do the push and pull so guys did you understand that all of you so far so this is just like a google drive on the internet like uh, this is like suppose like a google drive we logged into the google drive website and we created a folder here and from our local drive we are going to put our files into this uh, internet repository correct ha huh. so when you say file it is a repo committed code 
report sync you should not say files you should say repo local repo to remote repo it's a repo to repo communication these repo sync together with the objects of comment when you do the push and pull Got okay. it? okay so now here this is the url guys i'm going to push it look at this here git push whole url and then which branch master branch enter because i use the https i will be prompted for token so the last token which i used it it might have been expired i mean of course yes so here you can provide the browser login or token now where is the token so i think the token is here and i'm giving the token and sign in and see push has happened simple now guys can i check this and refresh see now guys i must tell you you have the same repo what you had in your laptop the only difference is you have interface for see three commits if i remember and these three commits why i did it region you have it who did it this is the account rajesh kumar and whatever it is and then all this stuff you can see the code these are the four lines of code by the way you can lots of features we have you can modify the code here also but developers are not allowed to do that so i will not talk about it lots of features are there so here you have a branch, here you have a tax, you know, and many things. So this is I what I did. Question. I have one yeah. question. If suppose two people are pushing their local repo into the remote repo, assuming that they both are right, then uh, into the master, okay, then how uh, uh in that case how they can revert and how they can make it correct see uh two people when you say there are certain guidelines we have it. okay so a good question actually but little early but anyways we'll respond so here this is a one repo which is at the github this is another repo which is a human so this is at the github now understand that this guy pushed that here so now you cannot you you will not be allowed to push again what do you have to do so first rule is stating it will you'll get any error actually and you'll get all this help on the command line itself when you push it yes you'll be asked pull first and okay. then push so there are certain protocols the moment you start working you'll get it but we'll 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 see that as you proceed further okay thanks okay so likewise so guys this is what i pushed it but now guys what what others supposed to do so now i am acting like a different guy i'm not the same guy who worked on the repo one i'm a different guy and i have joined just today so someone is will say hey guys go to this repo clone it and start working on it so i'm the new guy and i'm going to clone it what is a clone I don't think so. I have to tell you the definition of it. Matrix movie, you might have seen it, right? Same thing. Clone means clone. You have one repo, you can clone to multiple repos. And when you say, when you clone it, 100% capability, you get it to the whole, each repo. So I'm cloning it as you using HTTPS. And right now, I'm acting like a different person. And I'm using the CMD. I don't like a bash, get bash. And here it is. And get clone and here enter so guys i cloned it i'm working as a different guy this is my local repo and if you see that cmd it logs see same command i have a three commits also that means you clone it you get it everything so now what i'm supposed to do so i'm supposed to write a code actually so let me write a code on simple faking out actually quickly this is my code you write it you see git status so first oh, sorry git you have to go inside the repo so here clear the screen git status see so git add 
dot git commit another user another user enter git push origin master now the question is what is the origin that is a confusion it should be url right not origin so guys what happens you know what when you clone it the url will be created with a shortcut which is called origin most of the time so when you clone it this will be created so instead of url you can always say origin 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 like that so i add it i modify the code add it commit and then pushing it it will not prompt me for the token because it's already applied in the same machine and now if i go to this machine this uh, github you have other other person has done this commit wonderful so now i'm going to act like a first user so first user will do what this is the first user do you have this file no what you are supposed to do pull so git pull origin origin will not work for this guy because origin was not created here what do we do in this case well create origin because i can't remember the url again and again and i get irritated so how do we create it so git remote add origin this is a way to add it i'm adding it it's one time activity and now i can pull that and when i pull it you see here ls ds 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 the file is there so now you see that this is how we all work so here this guy push this guy pull add commit push pull add commit push pull push pull and this is the same flow which you'll have to keep doing life long Did one you understand question, yeah well one question though um um i pulled uh, but when I'm pushing, uh, is there a check happening to see if it's the latest because someone else could have pushed before me, right, on the same file? Oh, yeah, wonderful. Yes, let me do. Let me show you rather than talking because I have already answered this question. Probably you have to visualize this to get it. So now what I'm going to do here, look at my screen. Here I am pushing it. Okay, so here touch. One quick temporary push I'm doing. Touch file four dot Java colon git add dot colon git commit. And this is a shortcut. Okay. Adding one commit I did. One more commit, let me do that. And here. And git push origin master. So I committed and pushed it also. Now other guy, other guy, other guy, he is also working on it. So let me other guy also work on it. So let me add one more code. He has not pulled it, but he's still working on it. So this is one file extra files. You see the git status, git add, git commit, and commit and now he will push this he's also pushing without pulling okay so he's pushing origin master and see what message you get it see so what he is supposed to do first first pull pull yes first pull before pushing because you you are the base is not up to date so first pull i pulled it and now push got it all of you yeah uh, one question though when when you pull before you push then all your files in your local will get updated right uh it's not uh, like this you have to always remember the A commit baseline. will get Commit yeah. will get updated. Commit. Oh, commit. So if you remember okay. that, yeah, commit. So will only the uh, only new files will get pulled, right? That means. Yeah, yeah. Only the delta will be pulled, not everything, because you have not already everything. some of this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So guys, do we have all the features? What we planned and intend for it? So let me check it out at a high level. Here. Do we have a wiki? Let me discuss one by one. Here it is. Can we write a documents? Yes, you should. Create a first page. Home. And this is the editor. I don't think so. I have to teach you editor markdown. There are so many options are there. This language you can use it. Markdown is one of the popular one. Okay. Very reliable text file, textile and all this thing. And then save pages. You can create a many pages like that. Add pages and all. So yes, it's a wiki. Do you have issues? You can, whatever the issues you have, you can manage here. So here new issues. DevOps school dot com login page is not working and we have these issues and someone is reporting and someone has to work assign this that and submit the new issues so now you have issues you have a wikis role based access in a setting you go collaborators and teams you can invite a team or people people means some email id you can attach and then you can invite Team means what? So team means I have not created a team. You can create a team at org level. So this is the repo level, okay? So you go to the org level and here you see teams are here. So you can create teams for org level. So let me create one team. And this team is DevOps team. And here it's a 2024 team. And it's a visual secret, whatever it is. This team is created. Now you fill the members, invite the email address, and you can do that. So now you have a teams, you have members, and then you again back go back to the repository. Here you now add the teams. So setting collaborators team here. What access you want? Read, write. What exactly? Write. Add the access. So now anyone who's a part of this team, he should be able to, or she should be able to, uh, you know, do the access, I mean, things in this as per the access. Are you understanding all of you? Yes. So now guys, here you have a lots of feature. You have to spend some time with it. You know, activity, number of stars, number of people are watching and so on. Now here you see one feature which is called folk. Anyone have idea what is a folk? It is like making a branch. Mm, not a branch. Someone else would like to add? Kind of cloning. So whenever the person A is updating, it will be updating you. Okay, so let me put it in this way. Folk, you have to understand. This is the GitHub and this is your laptop. And here is a repo, what you have. And now many times what happens, uh, this folk is very helpful for the open source product actually. So many times what happens, they will not give you access to the repo. Okay, they will not give you the access to the repo, but they will give you the folk access. So basically, you know what? This repo, you can clone it here. That is very much is possible. And you can modify. This is you. And you can do whatever you want. But the problem is, you cannot, you are not allowed to push directly. So what they are saying, hey, do one thing. Do one thing. To fork it. That means clone it. But at a GitHub only. And that is you are not the owner of this but you'll become owner of this so now let's say if i focus some different repo let me go to the github uh, github and here this is a github and this is the guy you see uh he's having some repo sees the student i guess and she's having some repo this one and it's a public repo and i can access it and i would i would like to focus it see here see and who's the owner? DevOps school. Earlier, she was the owner of this. Now I'll become an owner of this. Okay, copy. 
and I'm going to do in the temp, right? Temp where is it? Somewhere it should be temporary. Yes. And now I'm forking out. And now the moment you fork it out, you will become owner of it. Remember, look at this URL. I become owner of the same code. What C has. See. Now what I can do, look at this image here again. What I can do, I can fork it out and I can clone this repo and I can do whatever I want and push the code into this repo because I am the owner of it. So far so good, all of you? Yes. And you know what? After that, once you feel the code is committed and pushed it, then you can request a pull request from here to here. Pull request means, hey, I'm ready with my code. Can you please review and take it up? So here I created a fork. This is the one I modify the code. This time I'm modifying that through UI. That's not good practice and not be allowed to do that. But just for the sake of doing it, commit online. I did this, modify the code and you see here. Now what I am going to do, I am going to create a request with Habib saying that, hey, Habib, I've completed my code. Can you please take it up? And how do we do that? So here I go to the pull request area and here created a new pull request and source is mine. Look at this here. Look at the arrow source is mine and destination is this one and Git has analyzed this one commit, one file change, one contributor, create a pull request. I am writing a request letter saying that, hey, these are the changes I've made it in the code. Can you review and take it up? Now, you know what? what? I created a pull request. She will get it. She'll be surprised why did I create a pull request, by the way. But she will get it and she will review this pull request. You see, this is a she. She will review the pull request and then she will say yes, approve or decline. And the moment is approved, the branch will be merged. The, the two repos will be merged. I mean, uh, one to another one. That means if you say here, these changes which you do in the master here will be merged with the master here if you approve the PR and if you do not approve it, then it's with only this repo and this repo. So One this is called why, why is it called a pull request? Why not a push? Because you're actually pushing from your uh, fork uh, repo to her, right? Yeah. But, but you're referring to it as a pull request? not a push i was just trying to clarify uh, why is it not a push but a pull in this situation uh why it is not a push and pull because you made your changes on the local commit and then you uh, uh pushed it to your fork repo right okay wait wait i'll uh, repeat the flow yeah this is uh mohan okay. yes this this is Raj account okay right so Mohan uh, Raj which is folk this out and yep. Raj got one repo which is the clone of this one but at a github yes okay now Raj will clone that work here and then push back to the folk one yes and from the folk one Raj will create a PR towards Mohan and Mohan request that request. And if he's approving this code, new code will be merged with this code and the work is done. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and then um, instead of going through this loop, why can't I just go directly from uh, Raj's local to Mohan's? Uh... You don't have access, right? It's a request, I mean, approval based. You don't have access to push. Okay. You don't and have access to reason you... Yeah, what I assume is that his question uh, regarding that uh, PR from Raj to Mo Mohan. So that request, is, is it a pull or a push request? Uh, Raj, Raj will create a PR pull request. 
uh, for Mohan and Mohan will have a pull request that means he'll be pulling from here to here but he has to review that I see but okay. if it if it was Mohan who was pulling from the fork for so we were creating, uh, see, it's a pull request means Raj will create a pull request for Mohan and Mohan right. will do the pull but only based on the review gotcha okay Okay, so guys, there are a few more topics which we have, you know, uh, we have many topics which we have, which includes uh, branching, but branching strategies, we have merging strategies, we have conflict resolution strategies, undoing strategies, and some of the additional use cases at the GitHub. For example, if you go, sorry, you. if you go to GitHub, here we have a CI actions, though it's a, at an intro level, we have a different tool for it in this course, actions and all. So we'll we'll discuss about all this stuff, but not in this session. Tomorrow we'll have a continuous sessions on this. So I think. Uh, one and a half hours of more session is needed and tomorrow we'll complete that git part with one more session and then followed by we'll migrate to different tools any questions anyone have so far i'm sorry one question uh, not related to git uh, but uh, part of the plan uh, maybe i was late i thought today's session was going to focus around sonar cube is that or rescheduled uh, sonar cube is after the git because see, remember okay that? Sonar yeah cube okay. Is, yeah okay so thank you there's a flow, flow for that yeah have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching